I like to call this July 9th regular council meeting to order. Would everybody please rise for a moment of silence. <coughs> and let's remember the boys and their coach and all the people that are trying to get them out of that cave in Thailand. Right now, eight children have been brought out. There's still four more in their their coach, plus all the volunteers and doctors and everybody that's inside that cave. Hopefully by tomorrow they all should be out safe. So let's remember them in our prayers. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Here. Ms. Cohen, uh, Lorraine called me late this afternoon. Her mother was operate, operated on last week, and she was on her road to recovery. But this afternoon, they had to take her back down to Philadelphia to the hospital, so she could not make it this evening. Ms. Rodriguez. Here. Mr. Catrucci. Present. Mr. Giuseppe. Off uh, before it's over, okay? okay. But I want to have Michael Hollister that represents the agency the developer that's redoing the, and rehabilitating the uh, Mill Run building. And when he's done, I'll have a few words I'd like okay. to add to Mike. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is just a bit of an update on uh, what's going on over at Mill Run 1201 Wilson. So We'll start the outside of the building first. Uh, we are aware that the grass uh, needs to be mowed and taken care of, and it will be on a weekly basis. Um, it's our hope also that the land development plan, um, which this council has already approved, will finally, the back and forth between the engineers, will come to a uh, closure in the next, hopefully the next month, so we can actually make the, take the out front and turn it into a permanent better solution than its current state. Uh, about a month and a half, uh, two months ago, we had a series of structural engineers inside the uh, five-story structure. And they brought to our attention that the concrete is sagging. Um, I'm not an engineer, but they said it needs to be reinforced. So what uh, Manny, the owner of the property, has, or has elected to do is we're having reinforcement steel installed on all five floors in where the concrete seams are, where the walls will be. Uh, that steel has been ordered. Uh, the shipment for the first, second, and part of the third floor should arrive on site in the next two weeks. And what's going to have to happen is we're going to take a window out on each floor, have a crane come in, put the steel in on each floor, and then we have to remove the uh, aluminum uh, uh, framing that we already installed and then install the steel, and then there's going to be a gap, obviously, where the concrete is bowing. And between, and in that gap between the steel that's installed and the bow, there's a special grout that we're going to install. Um, the end result is it's going to take about a week to do each floor to install the steel. And then it's going to take a second week to install and have the grout cure. Um, so that is what's going on on the five-story building. The two-story building, once we have the uh, land development plans, we have the 42 anchor points for the concrete. And that will be installed along with the uh, balance plates and uh, anchor bolts. And the steel for the three-story structure, it's, uh, the lead time on that is we're expecting delivery in the middle of August. Apparently, there's only one steel plant in the U.S. that can manufacture this type of steel, and uh, the soonest they can have it to us is uh, about the middle of August. 
So practical consequence, we're looking at an opening date probably of September of 19. Um, am I right when I when I say that they had some alternatives to do a on the cheap to fix that, but that they decided that they really wanted to do it the right way and put things aside that you know could have gotten maybe gotten them open earlier, but they were doing it the right way. Well, correct. I mean, so so no one wants to create a building that's not safe, and and we're only we we need an engineer to sign off on what we do, and if an engineer is not going to sign off on it, then we're not then. You know, we're not going to be able to get our certificate of occupancy. So that's, we, there's one way to do it the right way. And they're doing it, I mean, full oh, throttle, yeah. right? Yeah, it's about a $300,000 fix. Right. I don't think anybody realized what's involved during construction. They say what's taking so long. And you know, I mean, it's a major, it's a big project. Mm -hmm. over there. It's a, it is. And I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a new building. I'm not saying it's an old building, but it's just, He's, you know, it's a, it's that vacant for yeah. I give you guys a lot of credit. Thank you. For the money that you're putting into that facility. And I know it's going to be beautiful when it's done. So it's taking a little longer than everybody expected, but that's, you know. That's a, that's a life of a rehab job. Uh, nothing you can do about it. Exactly. People should be happy that you're doing it. We're, we're thrilled to be here, and we're looking forward to a long relationship with the community. Anybody have any questions for Mike? Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the update. Absolutely. Actually, uh, I know uh, our chairman knows a little bit about concrete, and I think some of you other here. I've never seen concrete sag, so it's it's amazing to me. Fixing it wrong couldn't happen. I mean, if it was sagging, it would be broke. You ever see concrete sag there? Yeah. So, but they are taking and fixing it right. You're correct. Uh, we're, I just talked to Amanda. We were really going to try to work with her and see if we can't get those final plans done. Uh, the developer wants to get right away with some contractors, get some prices, and get them in there to start doing that work. Like Mike says, it's a little bit of uh, looking bad now, but it's going to be good. It'll be good for fall and good for the winter, and they'll have that building framed out. So I like to have all the push we get and all the help we can get to get that done. So I'm available. The other uh, thing just is one minute. Amanda, huh? what's the hold up on? Is it the borough holding this up or um, so we had gotten the revised plans in I think a uh, week and a half to two weeks ago. Um, they're getting much, much closer. They've addressed a lot of our comments. Um, but I think maybe just one more meeting, like you said, with uh, with the engineer, we can kind of sort through a lot of the last kind of cleanup items and get them to the finish line. There are a few other uh, permitting entities that still need to go through, but um, I, I think, you know, Dumex office is working on that too, so. All right. All right. Anything we can do on our end, even if it means calling special meetings and moving things along, I, I want to see this project, you know. Yeah, yeah, these oh. couple meetings we've had, have, I think, you know, really helped to kind of push it along. So. Yeah, we just want to get it done so they yeah, can go so they to can work. Keep yeah, then you're going into the winter, Right. And, and we you know, don't have problems with that. What's that? Sorry. Uh, the other thing is we're working on Route 13 uh, to develop a 30-acre parcel. It's located in the township, but the sewer is actually with the Bristol Borough Sewer Authority. And we're to the point now, I see, I saw it ahead that you're getting ready to vote on it resolution. I want to really ask you to do that and make sure it gets done. We have Bristol Township working on theirs. I don't know if it's done yet. I didn't hear. But uh, we're really anxious to get that going. That uh, company wants to come in. They designed a new window that's made of more out of uh, plexiglass or whatever you call it, not, not plastic. It's going to be something different. And uh, they want to get started. They need to set out a, a uh, set that building up to do it. So Whatever you can do for that's fine. And finally, you don't have to hire me no more for being the director of the redevelopment authority. Because Jeff, I passed the uh, the hat today, but he wouldn't keep it. <laughs> but you do notice, you do know, stand up here, boy. Come on. <coughs> you do notice I got him wearing black, don't you? That's <laughs> it. Just so you know, you got to go get a hat, okay? Because that's the only way we're going to recognize you. Get a top hat. I've been going to get him that uh, Lincoln's hat, the top hat. There you go. So you retired today, Bob? 
Actually, today I, uh, I stepped down as a director. It saved me from working on the inside, you know, worrying about day to day. I signed a two-year contract with the authority to continue. I've been a special advisor to the board, advise the uh, staff, and to finish up these projects we got over there and maybe start a couple new ones that we're looking at. Well, you did a great job as far as I'm concerned. Congratulations. Thank you for your time. I would tell you you got big shoes to fill, but you got a big hat to fill, too, I can tell you that. <laughs> maybe you get a 10-gallon hat. <laughs> All right, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bob. Take care. So, so, those are yeah. Making an agenda item number two to ratify this uh, wastewater management plan. Yes, that's on the agenda. It's on the agenda, yeah. Right, so, which facility plan? Number seven. Yes, number seven. That's already on. Sorry, guys, I'm just saying. All right, so we didn't have a work session, so I'm going to treat this as a work session. Any things you want to vote on, the manager will put on the agenda, and we'll vote vote on that at the end of this meeting. So I'll start with the chief, Harvey. Yeah. The only thing that you have it on there is the that issue with the uh, sky lanterns and the uh, the mylar balloons and the hazards that they create. And so I'm looking forward to council get that passed, and we can. Uh, Reduce the potential for having a fire as a result of those those activities. I'm sure it may be in here, but I didn't. <clears throat> they talk about the chemical, you know, gases and stuff like that, lighter than air, but they don't talk about the open flame. Is that in here? Like, no, it's it's simply. I mean, the sky lanterns are are use a candle That's to give I mean. them the energy, and, and so by definition of those sure. those sky lanterns that yeah. encompasses the part of the flame. We don't need to specifically say open flames in this. In no, the, the sky lanterns by their definition use okay. that as the source of energy. All right, I just wasn't, I wasn't sure. I know they specifically talked about some of the other gases. Right. But. Yeah, just so you know, <clears throat> in the definition of luminary, it says regardless of fuel source, so no matter what it is, flame or whatever, sky lanterns, anything that Okay. Burns and goes up is considered uh, a, uh, an area luminary lantern. <coughs> I kind of looked through it and wasn't sure about that. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Kid goes down there and lets one go. What are we going to do? Are we going to cite him? Is there a fine involved? Well, I think you know you watch the parades. People accidentally let balloons off up in the air, and it's not designed. What we had were were people that wanted to do memorial services, right? That kind of stuff. Right. So they had sky lanterns, and so we had one last year. They asked the bar permission. The bar denied it. They went. They did it anyway. But they released like 20 or 30 of these things. Once you let one go, you have no idea where the air currents go because at 10 feet it's going in one direction, 30 feet up it could be going in a completely different direction. So you, on the ground you think the the um, the wind's blowing out to the river. And then it goes up 20, 30 feet in the air, and all of a sudden it's coming back into the borough. We had an incident last year where we found one on the roof of Selecto, where somebody had released it, and it had floated that far and dropped down. It's banned in like 20 states. The only states on the East Coast that haven't banned them, Vermont, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and um, Kentucky. Everything else on the East Coast and the West Coast, they're banned because of the hazards. Just so you know, it says that the prohibition is intentionally released. So if some of the kid accidentally releases yeah, one, it's, it's really not a violation. But we'll know when it's intentional. When you're doing a group of them, you know they're intentionally or for a wedding or something. That's an intentional release. And just along with the Mylar balloons, we did have an incident several years ago in the third ward down by number three fire station in that substation there. A Mylar balloon got into that substation, shorted out some wires, and caused a power failure. Anybody have any questions for Harvey? Chief? Anybody have any questions for the chief? I'd just like to say thank you. I'm sorry, I thought it was questions for Harvey for me. No, I was looking at you. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, I'd like to say that. thank you to the Bristol Borough Police, the mayor, um, and anybody that was involved in the arrest that had to do with the death of Robert Coulter III. I know that brought a lot of 
sanity to the family. I mean, you can't bring him back, but I mean, we were waiting and, and I'm happy to hear that they have arrested three people. Um, and I appreciate the effort. So thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. That's one of the things you want to report on, uh, with the cooperation and uh, you have to really have special uh, recognition for Dave Hanks, a uh, detective from Bucks County Detectives, really, really put his heart and soul into this. And with the work of Billy Davis and also with the cooperation of the FBI, we were able to bring this to a successful conclusion, of course, prior to trial. Uh, but we know that these things are painstaking, especially for the family. But uh, these cases um, are very difficult if, without it being solved with, uh, immediately at that time. We also had the uh, bank robbery last week. We're actively investigating that. Um, we have several leads in that that we're working on. And the only other thing I wanted to touch on is we were going back and forth. We're having some issues down in Mill Street lot. Um, basically, with people loitering or sleeping overnight over there, we do the best we can. But we really don't have a backbone to enforce it with. So I sent an uh, email to the manager and the mayor and uh, Bill last week looking for something. Maybe if we can do some type of prohibition for sleeping in vehicles, and that might, you know, give us some help. Okay. I sent an email to Sally last week. I want to set up a meeting with the chief uh, and the mayor and Sally and John uh, okay. and discuss. We need an ordinance. Because our ordinances against trailers and all really apply to the streets and alleys. Yeah. We don't really have to address the parking lot. But I think it's a bigger issue than that. So we're going to sit down. It, it's something we need to deal with. But we, it's going to take a little while. If I might interject, being around that area a lot, um, uh, I think it's something that's very noticeable these days as to what, not just what might go on in certain automobiles, but as we know, there are certain people that might be staying a little bit longer than others in that parking lot and then there's also people using it for business um, I think there's a legitimate concern of people that live on Mill Street to say I, you know it's a, it's a safe and nice place for me to park at night so when we're considering it obviously I think we all need to take that into consideration too if it ends up being permit parking but the state of that parking lot is is not good in my humble opinion no, I, I think the ordinance really has to be strong enough to give the police some leverage and also people are using it for just leaving their trucks there right. pulling up in the morning getting in, you know leaving their car and taking their trucks to work I mean it's we're becoming a storage area for them instead of a public parking lot for everybody to use so yeah, some it's something we need to crack down on them as fast as we can and clean it up down there would it would it help to make it to prohibit overnight parking well, that's what I was referencing when I said people that live there. Right. Well, I mean, you prohibit it. How do you, how, what do you do with them? You give them permits, just like we do right. on, on Rackham Street to the residents there. Right. That's, that's what I think. They have a permit. They can park there. It'll eliminate the idea of, because some guys say they get picked on because they leave their trucks there, you know, and their businesses are there or whatever. Right. Um, but we can do it on a case-by-case -case and get the permit. but. The long and short is no overnight parking. Midnight, everything's yeah. everything moved out. It makes it easier for the for the police, I would think. Oh, absolutely. And we don't have to decide then who's. I don't want to decide who's sleeping in their car. No, I agree 100. Because then somebody's going to say, "Well, I was driving and I got tired and I, you know, I went by down by the river and fell asleep." Yeah. yeah well, if, if you're there, and this has been going on. Years. For, for, for years, because my in-laws lived on on Mill Street, and I remember my brother-in-law having problems with people. Same thing, they start to congregate down there, and it's an all-night, it becomes an all-night party place for some for some people, so. Yeah, we do have a lot of people storing their trucks down there. I'm not, I, I mean, I, I can see you want to park one truck, but some people have three, four trucks. Like, they think it's their own public parking. RVs, now there's two RVs down there. I mean, we just need to, we need to do something soon. What's everybody's thought on, I hear a rumor, you know, people talking that, why don't you just make it, you got to pay to park down there. And you put a kiosk in and you hire another meter maid to go that's around and. That's, I don't think it's going to deter the people with the, when the, I call them the bagels and they go there and they can pay. Start getting 25 hour tickets a day to stay there, you're going yeah. to move I, it. 
I, I know another issue too is uh, one of the businesses over on um, on the Cedar and Wall Street. Yeah. They have large trucks. Yeah. They park down towards the other end, but you can't. The, the one truck is so large you can't drive when, the, when there's cars parked on both sides. You can't drive past there. Yeah, it's and it's big. like three trucks there, um, and those they're too big. There's recreation. I don't know if they're recreational. I, I I think somebody. I I bring it up tonight, but you have it in here. I think somebody's living there. I approached the guy, and he's like, I, he said the the borough and the police department have been harassing him. I'm saying, well, it is. He's, he's, he's admittedly living there. He sent me a note. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Because exactly. he lives there. <laughs> I mean, that, that, Sorry. that just got to stop. You know? yeah, he said he, he sent us an email saying he was homeless and that's we're picking he, on him. And That's what he told me. Yeah. Well, you got an RV and everything else. I don't think you're homeless. I think the, the other RV, the, the one with all the, the, yeah, there's two the, now. the one with the junk in the back, that was parked up on one of the first properties. It was parked. They had a hard time getting to move that. It was up on Mill Street. Mm. So we all agree we need to do something. Yes. Do something. But do something that's going to be very yes. strong. Yes. I'd like, have, I'd like to see it have some teeth into it to where it's absolutely right. Maybe not just enforce it. And, and I think we need to look at, you know, like you said, I think the ordinance was written years ago because when the, you had the boat ramp, people were pulling, putting their boats in and leaving their trailers. So I think the way it was written 25, 30 years ago was it talked more about trailers than vehicles. Now you're pulling a, a trailer with, you know, a car and we need, it's not all about trailers anymore. It's about trucks being down there. So we need to look at the whole ordinance and mm -hmm. and get that resolved. All right? Okay, we'll need parties and we'll come up with something. <clears throat> okay, yeah. any other questions for the chief? I just want to compliment your force on Saturday. There was a, uh, a homeless person in a van who admittedly, you know, stays down in the parking lot. He was going down Rackley Street two or three o'clock in the afternoon, hit two cars, and yeah. hit one car, hit the second car, that one across the street, hit a telephone pole, and then he kind of drifted into the to a third car, which didn't look like there was any damage, but your officers were really great in handling it. The guy didn't seem to be intoxicated, but you know, again, he's living out of his van, and I don't know whether he fell asleep, but he had to be going pretty, he said he was only going 15 miles an hour. Well, hmm. You don't move two cars and put them across the street at 15 miles an hour, but, but this is a problem. Again, he's, you know, and the cops said that they, you know, they've seen him down at the parking lot, so he travels around. Uh, I guess it's become an easy spot for, you know, for people, so. Well, you figure if you're running a business and you got to go rent a place to put your vehicles in, it's very expensive. So they're using a public lot. I mean, even there's people parking in the parking rides around town, roofing trucks and everything else. Then you, the guys pull up in the morning in a car, eight, you know, six, eight guys get out and of a van, they get in these trucks and they leave, and then they come back and park all their trucks there at night. So. You know, one, one thing that just occurred to me, we obviously want to fix this problem, but we have to be careful about how we might have caused a domino effect. I would hate to see people that are currently parking down there just move their operation right up the hill. I think it's got to be town-wide. Right. Because we have trucks parked on side streets right. that shouldn't be parked on. So, you know, if it's a commercial truck, right. I have a problem with one on and police department handle the great on Cherry Street. Somebody comes home with two big tr trucks, flatbeds with writing on the sides and all, and they're not supposed to be on the street. Commercial or what do you call those? Resident? Uh, well, if you've got a work uh, van or a little, I mean, that's No, I'm talking thing. about what do you call the art, like what's the official name for an RV? Over 18 feet is what it is. Yeah, because there is an ordinance. It can't be but so big. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I have you know, commercial problems, one problem, but when you, when you have people that are setting up their residence, the one guy posted that the borough, instead of harassing him, should be helping yeah. to get him a water a, a water hookup. Yes. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's just what we want to do. What our, what our I think we're all on councils 100% behind this. So, show, you know, get it written, show, give us a sample. Maybe we could add to it or see how we think and move from there. Yes. 
All right, I'm going to go to public participation. Anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything, go to the podium and state your name. Nobody. Anybody on this side of the room? That ends public participation. Joe? I'll hold my comments for Greg, anything on the work session? Uh, just uh, quickly, just a thought. I mean, it's, it's a year away, but these things need planning. Um, I had spoken with the, the fire chief and he had referenced that, and Merle how almost uh, scared they were on the 4th of July about how many people were just setting off their own fireworks. Um, seems to be something that's going on in a lot of places. Just a thought, you know, we have those docks, we have those, uh, we have a lot of people that are coming in from out of town. Um, about, I know that taking on fireworks is a gargantuan thing. But I'm just wondering if it's something we might want to consider for next summer, um, seeing if we can put together a group of public, private, uh, to get some energy behind that. Just a thought. I don't know, you know, what people think about that. That's all I have. Last time we did sign, it runs about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. Right. To do a nice mm -hmm. twenty-minute show, they call it. Mm -hmm. So. And I wouldn't expect that we would foot the bill for all of it, just the thought no. that we could get some sponsors and some some other private entities involved. Dave? Uh, I, I talked to Mr. Dillon last Friday, so uh, I'm, I'm good. Louie? I'm fine. Tony? Yeah, um, behind running town, which I brought up a month and a half ago, uh, the borough and, uh, and, the, and the landscapers dumped uh, wood chippings back there. I know yeah, you know, I the, uh, the borough crew dumped some wood, wood chippings I guess they uh, ground, uh, ground up some um, tree branches and stuff like that. There's a pile of them behind running towers. Some of it has been removed. I don't know if we can get, the, get rid of the rest of it. It's been dumped back there. I don't know what, why we dumped it back there in the first place, um, why we didn't take it to where we usually take it. But um, if we can get that cleaned up, it's right along the um, CDM fence line in the back there. It's, it's, it's just dumped on truckloads of it back there. And we dumped it? Yes. We dumped it, and then they uh, a landscaper also got after that one. After the big storm, we had to come in and uh, chip up a lot of uh, stuff, and uh, George felt that was good location. Uh, yeah, so we'll look into it. Is that the one Felipe? You're saying Felipe, right? Because he he was chipping stuff for us. I know that. Yeah. Be, well, he was there today. He was stuff. working with the borough crew doing well, stuff. Yeah, he thought that he had the, his truck's a lot bigger than what the dump back there as well too. And I said I'm just assuming that's from the, the cleanup, but yeah. if we could just spread it out or if we're not if we're intending to get rid of it, spread it out or something. There's just clumps of piles and it's actually it kind of has an odor to it now with the, with the moisture and everything. Alright. So Jim um, said he's aware of it. Okay. Um how about, do we have is there kind of ordinance uh residents collecting scrap, go around collecting scrap, they leave it on their trucks and then they uh, uh they bring it home and they just dump it in their yard. I mean, I have one, if there's one on my street, and the pile grows and grows and grows, it just never leaves. It goes out multiple, every time, like, so it's uh, Monday night tonight, so you'll go out scrap in the night, bring it back. And it's, the whole yard is littered with scrap. And I, I, uh, I know it used to be nice to drive around town and see other people that, um, when scrapping was big, that was a, um, you know, you see trucks parked on the road with full junk metal in that. Um, I don't know if there's anything there. Like I said, I, I, go out my, I go outside of my house and I'm looking at this big pile and then there's a truck full of stuff. Well, there's got to be something in our borough or that that's says that's you can't dump trash in your, you know, right. scrap in your yard. That's not even, is that considered a business then also? I mean, that, that might, you know, is that a home business? Or? I think you need to talk to Sally, but there's got to be something in the ordinance about that. And even them trucks parked on the street filled with That's stuff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you see them. And you, sometimes you can't drive past them. They stop hanging out. Um, and the last thing, um, I was down um, down North Street. I, I mean, you can send me an email with that address, and I'll get a check. Don't, don't bother Sally. She's about ready to go out okay. the window. I send everything to you anyway. She's about ready to go out the window on things. Anyhow, there's a lot going on. Okay. All right. Just I'll send I'll me an email there. with the address, and I'll yes, get sir. it. Thank Please. You. Um, down where we talked about um, at the, where, where the JD, uh, Joe Ventresca's property, where he's building this property, we talked about bringing that curve up and rounding it off. There's, been, like, are we, there's something going on down there now. It looks like another curve, a couple feet in, parallel. <laughs> 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 
that's not us, is it? Amanda, you want to tell them what's going on because it's very frustrating dealing yeah, with a lot going this on. project anymore. Um, so we did meet with the developer um, a few weeks ago um, and showed the the sketch that we had, um, you know, presented last month, um, and he did seem agreeable to it, and I, I do think he was on board um, with the sketch that we had. Um, had a very good discussion during that meeting, and um, we had, I want to say it was last Monday, we were, um, you know, came to the site, our inspector was there, and realized that they were demoing the sidewalk. So, um, you know, we were, we are working with them now, um, but originally the plan was to kind of hold off on that right because of the, the new improvements that were planned. Um, but they are going to now replace that sidewalk um, along the townhomes and do the ADA upgrades um, to those curb ramps there. So Here, here's the frustrating part. I would like to see it like, like, like I thought our, our intent it was to come back, have a 25 foot radius, right. and then make it all candy caps. So and and it is still the frustrating part. part about the whole thing. We had a meeting two weeks ago. Myself, Amanda, the buyers that are sitting there, Mr. Ventresca. Went through the whole thing, discussed the, the sketch plan, told them <clears throat> it's not etched in stone. It's a uh, it's a plan working process. We're moving forward, but this is the concept. He was happy. I think the buyers were happy. Am I correct? When we <coughs> left the meeting, and then this we get a phone call that they're out there ripping the sidewalks out there. This is the frustrating part with this development. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, it seems like the next day they just go do what they want to do. Want to then when they get stopped or shut down, then the borough, it's, you know, we're picking on people. No. So it's getting to a point now. I told Amanda on Friday we talked. I don't care if you got to shut the whole job down. I mean, I'm tired of people calling saying what's this like you're you're saying what's yeah. going on mm -hmm. well we don't even know what's going on because they just seem to do what they want to do he, so he i don't know how to resolve it he, he, he's down he's like putting footers in there he's down deep so i don't know what he's doing so they had to go Hello, out Black during Black. a holiday yeah. to figure out what's going on you know and he did it without a permit it's part of the land uh, development it plan. is part of the land development plan. but you don't just our property it, it, yeah, right. They were going to do their, you know, ADA upgrades and things adjacent to the property. Um, but again, because of the discussions we had about these improvements that the borough's planning yeah, I mean, to do. I, when you go down there, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, you're fine. You come down, you have the, the existing curb that's one or two feet in. There's another curb, and then it looks like it's going to be the ADA ramp type thing, and there's another curb. And it's all going to get ripped out. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know. I mean, he must like wasting money. And we did we did ask him to Why safe it off. Obviously for the holiday it was you know a busy weekend, so he did you know safe it off. But at this point we told him he does need to go forward with now replacing everything so that, that he's ripped out. That, no, they the did. They okay. just. But the problem is you have a meeting. You waste two hours or more of your time discussing everything. You leave the meeting. Everybody's feeling good about the meeting, and then you get a phone call. What's going on? So then, you know, you find out, well, they had a backhoe, they start ripping stuff out. We have events this weekend, right? You got people coming into town. It rained all day Friday. So the weekend now, we have this place looking like a bomb hit. It, it doesn't When apply. nobody should have touched anything without, even if it's in your land development plan, I think the best thing you could do was call the borough and say, hey, look, we're moving forward with the land development plan any problem doing it this week. You don't start a project the day before 4th of July knowing you can't finish it, and that's that's what happened. Yeah, and we have requested schedules or at least a, a week ahead, you know, an advance notice of the, the work that they're doing. And, um, you know, I get that they're trying to keep their workers busy and, and move them around to keep them, you know, working, but it's uh, it's tough when it's on borough property, it's a holiday weekend. It, that was... And festivals coming up, too. Mm -hmm. So we are working with them. They're replacing everything that they ripped out, um, but, yeah, it was an unfortunate... And thing. even if they send them a letter, there's been... We have a file this thick. Please do not proceed with this unless you meet with us. It doesn't matter. They proceed. So, Al, you want to say something? You're one of the buyers. Yeah. Uh, 
Go to the podium. Hi, everybody. As you're all aware, we've been trying to make settlement here for, what, 14 months now. We keep saying, yeah, it's been longer than that, maybe. And uh, now we're up against the schedule for settlement July 16th, which I don't think we're going to make for one reason or another. Uh, <clears throat> we were surprised ourselves when the, we, that, that meeting we were at, for health, that everything was, the direction we were going to go in was that sketch, which everybody was happy with. But it, 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 but it was going to take time to put that together. There's a lot of money involved, like a million dollars to move the poles and everything else. So the, the developer, and I'm not, this is the way I understand it, he felt he would meet his original uh, promise to, to, to redo that, 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 that sidewalk in there. So they started to do it, and somebody came up to him and they said, stop. <coughs> we're going we're to go ahead with this other plan. So they stopped. Wow. And then the next day, somebody back, came back, Ralph, and they said, go ahead and finish it. That's, that's the story I got. The problem is, when we had that meeting, was Mr. Ventresca supposed to put a schedule in place? Because you said to him, i like to know when I can go to settlement. And he okay. says, two weeks. Right. Correct? Yeah. That was over two weeks ago. Right. So July 16th was the date they put. Well, you know that's not going to happen. Uh, I, well, I don't know. I, so what I'm saying is, if you sit in a meeting, which we did, and we tried to work, and the borough has been bending over backwards the, the trying was, to get this beautiful. project finished. It was, it was like paradise at the meeting. It was just terrific. Everybody got along, and uh, the plan sounded great. But, but so it, at any point during that meeting, did we say go rip the sidewalks out? No, but... We all understood, including you, Ralph, that that was not going to happen in a couple months. It's going to take time to get the money that you need to do what you want to do. But it didn't matter. It was fine. We, what I said in that meeting was, this plan's not going to happen tomorrow. Right. But it's going to happen because council wants to see this. It's not just me. I mean, there's a councilman right there. Is a councilman for that ward? Yeah. He thinks the same way we're all thinking. Right. This road needs to be wide, and we said that. We said we would do a buffer with a sidewalk. You guys were happy with that. Everybody agreed. We even that. addressed how you could exit off the decks right. by putting a set of steps down at the end of the heading on the Mill Street. Off of the restaurant. Everybody was happy with that. Right. Then, for some reason, they start ripping sidewalks out. Well, that's the reason that I, I don't know the exact reason, but they felt obligated. To but who did they call to say? You know what? I feel obligated, so I think tomorrow I'm going to go rip the side. It's a day before 4th well, of there, July. In the, original, in the original agreement, I think they were supposed to do that sidewalk. And it is pretty messy out there, Ralph. You have to admit that. We understand that, Al, but what we're saying is you just, the day before 4th of July, you start ripping up a sidewalk. That's like me going in front of your house, knowing you're going to have all these people tomorrow coming. I go rip your sidewalks up. You know, that may happen the way this double thing has been going. All right, well. But anyway, all we, I'm saying is communication. We appreciate helps. what you did and what everybody's doing. We like to get get through all this and uh, beautify the, the places. I mean, Joe there. was happy when we left the meeting. We were all happy. You were happy. You, you were right. even happy. So why would you then go rip out a side? It just makes no sense with what he's doing. Well, he's spending the money. He did it because he felt that he should have. That's why he did it. A while to be, everybody, nobody wants to spend money to throw it away. All right, but if if I was at a meeting with you and I said, you know what, I think we're all on the same page. The buyers are happy, the developers happy, the borough's happy. What would make me go rip out a sidewalk? Okay. And, and, and defense for, for them, the fact that nothing was really established. The plan was very nice, but it's not going to happen for a while. Even now, it'll probably take a couple of years to get through that. Wouldn't you say? No, we have a plan. We have a packet, and everybody's council all got this packet tonight with some cost and looking at how we're going to move forward with this. Yeah. And there, there's some money out there that we may be able to get to move this along very quick. Great, that's terrific. Besides, put all that aside. It's still you don't go rip out a public sidewalk without notifying the borough that we're going to do. We're going to fulfill our obligation. I think the borough would have said start Monday after the holiday if you really want to do it. So his obligation also is to put benches in and shrubbery. Is he going to do that? Well, actually, whatever the council but wants. But it isn't what we want because it seems like he does what he wants. Well, I don't know if 
Well, it's part of his agreement. I don't know the whole agreement, Ralph, but in the agreement, oh. he was supposed to replace that, that sidewalk. So All right. Thank Thanks. you for everything. Thank you. Can you hold money in, in escrow rather than... Well, we Rather send them a letter. More in, concrete down and have it ripped up. I mean, in that's lieu, in lieu we, of doing the work, we could put the money in escrow to do something well, else. We, we do have escrow. We got a substantial escrow for all public improvements. So you understand, as part of the original land development, council agreed with him that he would improve that area. Right? He put sidewalks in. He do what he had to do. Uh, so he's committed to, to do improvements there. We thought it was pretty clear at the meeting that you don't need to do that right now. Because when he came in, he said, what do I need to do to get these people in? And we told him he needed to do the retaining wall, he needed to do the parking lot, and he had to do some checklist things. We said nothing about the front. Now, if you noticed, he did do some crosswalks in the back, in the basin. That's part of his obligation, he did that. No reason in the world he needed to touch that park. Because the shame of it is the money he'd spent, that he just spent, it's going to be pulled out. He could have used for the benches and the landscaping. Okay. That's the shame of it. It's wasted money. But just so you know, it was clear that we were not requiring him to do that. Why well, he just went ahead and did it to us is we're, we're, we're shocked. But he's gotten, he's going to get a letter, just drafted a letter, making it clear do not proceed on that part of the thing until he speaks. What's going to happen now is they have done what they suggested to help. Completing it or the rest of it help. And again, they have to create the problem. We're going to have to work it out. The council is going to be voting soon on that project. It's not voted upon yet that you're going to make that change. We're getting there. It's not going to take two years. We're getting there. I, can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Just as someone that has not been as intimately involved as you guys are, um, what is happening there, or what did happen there, was what it, what is the relationship to that with people who have purchased not the, uh, their their condos? That's not going to affect them going to closing. That's so, what we try to explain, right? Yes, right. So I guess respectfully, I'm asking you guys. I would imagine your concern should be with the developer, not. I mean, I get it. You want your, where you're going to live to look great. We're not going to complain. We're happy. He said it's a little. Great when we move in. That's what we want to hear. Right. But now it's, it's done. So now. Sure. How do you want it to look? I totally understand that. I guess what I mean is, in so far as. Are you going to wait for, for how long before this plan is approved? And you start doing what what our plan would be done. Yeah. We, we're not going to approve anything until we know we have the money to do the project. It could be. <laughs> but it has no bearing on you moving into your condo. Sure it does. We're moving into a pigsty. Then you. We want to look nice for you guys too, not just for ourselves. It does look nice. No, it does not, Ralph. You guys want to put the sidewalk back that he took up, and he's getting a letter not to touch anything else on that. You don't want to finish the complete sidewalk. It's done. Three quarters done. What do you, how, why would you, Amanda, could, maybe you could help yeah, me with this. So, again, it was all originally part of the approved land development plans. Now that we were, the plan was not to complete any of those improvements since the borough was going to complete them for him. However, since he did begin demolishing it, we have told him he needs to proceed with finishing everything as far as the sidewalk and the curb ramps and the curbing area. So it will be completely put back. It will be safe. It will look nice. He needs to seed that area. But as far as landscaping, benches, those sorts of things, um, you know, hopefully he doesn't proceed with that. And we're telling him that too, not to proceed with that at this point because, you know, the borough is planning to do additional improvements. So again, he would, it, they would be removed as part of the, the borough's improvements. So is it clear to everybody here that you're going to finish the sidewalk, do the landscaping? No. No, we're not doing no. So the developer is going to need to finish the sidewalk and the <clears> curb <throat> ramps. He does need to seed because he doesn't have full seating down right now, and that that would be it at this point. Amanda, does any of this work that he that we're proposing that he finishes affect the widening of that street? 
in, well, like, would it be removed, you're saying, as part yes. of the, yeah, there are portions that are going to need to be removed. Can we, are they where the curve cuts are? Yeah. Can we tell them where the curve cuts should be um, when the street gets widened? Unfortunately, we're, we have to pull back that corner, the radius, so the curb ramp he's now putting in would completely need to be I think the smartest out. thing would have been if he would have came into the borough and said, and we gave him some at that meeting, we're putting shrubbery along the decks. You want to put shrubbery along the decks, Joe? Knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. In front of that shrubbery, we're putting a five-foot sidewalk or whatever. You want to put that sidewalk in, that's fine. And then from that sidewalk to the deck is good. Right. But we had no communication. And if, you want, if you're ripping the corner up, why not put the radius in That's what I'm thinking. instead of pouring it and then us ripping it? This is what the, the frustrating part is. They just move forward with something, and now we got to move, rip it out. I mean, so, if he'd like to move forward, he still has it demoed at that corner. If he would like to move forward with... Was anybody there you know, today working? Yeah, they were working today, yeah. Well, I, I was at the meeting. My wife was at the meeting. And I took some notes. And nowhere in the meeting was where we were told to stop anything. We were talking about the possibility of doing this beautiful artwork that the engineer put together. But nobody told to stop. Well, they, haven't, they hadn't started it at that point. They hadn't started it at that point. So they didn't have to finish that sidewalk for settlement. So I sat there trying to do the break in the next time you did this in there. Man, right. there's no reason to keep this going. Yeah. All right. I mean, you can't. <laughs> we'll rip it out. Yeah. Well, when, yeah, we're going to have to rip it out. We rip it out. But you want to finish it, Rams? I mean, he's well he's got to finish what he's. Finish. He's got to finish the sidewalk. Think, uh, but here's, the, here's the thing I don't want to happen. I don't want this being used as a, as a, a, a wedge for us not to widen that street. Because no, no, that's, that's his. He, he had a. It was in his crawl from the start that we were taking something away from him, and we weren't. It's our property. We want to make it work. Some of your other plans did that. This new plan is wonderful. There was no approved plan yet. I know. So it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter what was out there. There is no. We haven't. We haven't agreed to a plan. But I just don't want this. I don't want him to think that by doing this, he's going to. He, we're going to sit back and say, well, we're not going to waste this money. We're not going to widen that street because we are going to widen that street. No, I can, I can that. Okay. Where do you get the money? Pardon? Where do you get the money? From? We're going to widen that street. I just want to let you know. So if, if you go to settlement and then you see that street gets widened, that you say, well, geez, I didn't think they were going to do it. No, no. We, we are going to widen that street. But if you go to the plan and show this, it's excellent. But if you put a fence up, like somebody said, we're not going to offend the. $750,000 for a house to have a fence on it. Well, we never had said that. I never even heard anything about a fence there. Uh, the plan you showed was terrific. Did we ever have a drawing with a, a, a plan with a fence? Yeah. No. I don't know where people are getting all this. Well, that's where we got the fences we got. But anyway, we're happy. Did you get it from the borough? See, I think sometimes people like to talk to you with a lot of bad, you know, that's information. Right. Somebody just said that. Let's forget about it. We want to be happy. Okay. We all right. Happy. I just want to let yeah, you know. Like, I want to let you know that that's going to get widened for convenience and safety for everything else. It's yeah. going to get widened. And it's a shame that he's wasting the money that we could have put that money. Well, he has a lot of money. Don't worry about it. Pardon? Don't worry about his money. <laughs> it doesn't do us any good. It's going to look nice in the interim, but before, you, before the crowd gets the money. So it's going to look pleasant. And we agree with that. That place should be cleaned up. All these first fines that they have, all the events you have, it's supposed to be cleaned up. I want to leave here with you understanding one thing and and your son-in-law, whatever. Russ. Russ. You, this borough is not holding you up from moving in. That road, that street, that curb, the widening, the bushes has no bearing on you moving in. You need to finish, he needs to finish the punch list that's on the the two units, his parking lot so you could park, and the retaining wall. Once that's done, as far as I know from two weeks ago, you can move, go to settlement with a temporary UNO, I think, that's still not 
a final year. He felt that he had to make a decision. That was never discussed, Al. That meeting. But a holdup was never discussed either, Al. At that meeting, no one said, just stop everything until we get this plan to place it. I think it was. Okay, uh, that's done. Where am I at? Betty, what do you have? Tony, are you done? I'm finished, thank you, yes. Um, I'd just like to send prayers out for the Rivera family. Their father passed away on June 18th. His name was Jose Rivera. Uh, it's a big family in the borough, and condolences to all of them. Uh, next month, we're going to um, have a proclamation given to the Harriman United Methodist Church, celebrating 100 years of service to the borough. On Saturday, July 21st at 5.30 out front, there will be a flag raising for the Puerto Rican Culture Association. And then on Saturday, July 28th, Norma Sullivan invites the whole borough and everybody involved in the Puerto Rican Culture Association to the Puerto Rican Day Festival at the wharf from 12 to 8. Okay. I have a couple little things. First of all, in our packets, we got a letter from the Bucks County Tour of Honor. They try to bring veterans to Washington and all, and they're asking for a donation. I'm asking council to dollars help pay for a couple people to go. Uh, So I'm going to add that to the agenda items that are already here. The other thing is uh, we had that when we did the docks, we went out to bid for additional electric work and things at the wharf, and the numbers came in astronomical. I think one was 150,000, one was 200 and some thousand. We rejected all them bids. And we had a local guy that's retired come down there, Dave Rago, and work with our borough guys when they were doing the renovations, and they, they did a hell of a job. And we didn't give him anything. <clears throat> I'm requesting to put on tonight's agenda that we give him like a $2,500 gift certificate for all his, I mean, he was down there for a few months in a cold, and he does a lot of things for the borough. He goes down. <clears throat> Excuse me, with the fountain and when there's electrical issues, George calls him and he never takes anything, but maybe, you know, take his family on vacation or something like that. So if nobody has a problem with that, I'm going to make that, add that to the agenda. The other thing is our pension plans that are invested with uh, Stiefel, right? There was Stiefel. The guys that we invest with now or with Grunnell, uh, not Grunnell, they're back with uh, Jenny Montgomery Scott. So for us to give them the pension funds, we could do it, because council could just vote tonight to say, but the right way to do it is to go out and advertise again, see who wants to come in and give us a proposal on how they would invest the money and just go through the whole process. So I'm requesting that the manager and solicitor set up something to advertise that we're looking for investment companies to come in, speak to council, and we can make a decision on how we want to proceed with this. You want to add anything to that? No, just Act 44 is very strict in far, terms of uh, awarding these kind of contracts and transferring them. And even though the same people, group of people, are handling our investments, even though they're going to Janney, I think the safest thing to do is advertise, bring in them, bring in whoever else is interested, hear them, just like we did a few years ago, every once in a while we, we kind of listen to people, and then if you vote to keep it with this group, it will just be with Johnny instead of with Stiffel, but it will be exactly the same group of people. So you can get that meeting, even if it's got to be a special meeting? Yeah, we'll, we'll advertise and... Well, our August meeting's coming up pretty quickly, right? Six. Yeah, okay. So then we can put it on for, even if we got to come in at 5 o'clock, have whatever investment firms are interested in talking to us. Last time, I think, three different companies showed up, and we interviewed each one separately on how they would invest the money. And I think it's good, to, you know, to see what's out there. 
that's about all I have. So I'm adding the three things to the, the pension fund. Does that need to be added or something you guys can do? No, it's something we have to do. No, I'm saying without us voting. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's something we're required to do. But we don't need to vote. No. So the only two things I'm adding that got to be voted on is Dave Rigo and uh, Bucks County Tour of Honor at $7,250. So that'll be number eight and number nine on the agenda. And how much are we giving Dave Rago? Mr. President, um, there was a letter from uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick about yeah. some grant monies available for um, school safety, and mm -hmm. sounds like some of them might be police, uh, police related. Uh, is this something that we, I think their cutoff date was is July 23rd to apply for these these grants. Is this something that we can can do in that amount of time? Or? Chief, you aware of anything? It's not a singular entity. It's a a consortium of multiple people. Um, I, I have to be very honest with you. I think you should be very. Uh, federal government really did a disservice to especially communities like ours with our staffing levels and our administrative staffing levels to say, hey, guess what? In a month, put together a grant yeah. application for this and meet with all the parties involved. Uh, we're working on it and see what we can put together, but I'm not going to, I'm going to be truthful with you, I don't believe. Especially if we look at the programs, yeah. if you really look into it, um, looks nice on paper. Yeah, well. And, you know, if you have your <coughs> grant writer that's working for you 40 hours a week, and you had your push send and you're ready to go, you'll probably get it. Um, okay. It's a shame. It really is. No, but we've also had, we have, last year we were awarded $60,000 for the SRO grant. Uh, we, that's where we had our officer in the school all year. We're still working forward with them. We're hoping for another $30,000. Uh, we've been in contact with the same people that were hoping for that. But again, we are, we are looking at this to see if we can pull a rabbit out of the hat, but I'm not going to promise you anything. I just want to make sure yeah, we also read something from, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you offline later. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's jumping on board and I think getting a little, it's a shame the way it was done. I know that. Mr. Don. Okay, uh, on the uh, proposed agenda uh, are one, two, three, four items. Uh, one is the uh, consider adopting a resolution ratifying the 2018 municipal waste management plan as adopted by the Bucks County uh, commissioners. Uh, that was in your packet, as well as the uh, proposed uh, ordinance to prohibit the release of helium balloons and sky lanterns. That's been advertised and is ready for your consideration. Also in the packet was the reject the handicap curb bids that we received. Uh, and this is based on the recommendation of Gilmore's memo of July 3rd. Uh, this is money that we received from the, the county community development block grant, but the bids came in excessive. So it's recommended that the, the bids be rejected and you authorize uh, staff to uh, go out and rebid at the appropriate time. So we'll work with the county and the engineer, and uh, uh, we're not sure when that appropriate time will be to go out to bid again, but uh, the bids were excessively high. Uh, I think the problem is everybody is so busy right now, people are just throwing numbers out there. So they're, they're, they're like $1,500 or $2,500 more per ramp. It was almost double what Almost double what we paid, almost double what we paid last time. So it shows you that nobody's looking for work, and if they get it, so. Also, uh, there's the uh, proposed resolution amending the borough's official sewage facilities plan. Mr. White touched on this. This is a uh, piece of property that uh, is in the township uh, uh, on 413 that would be serviced by a new sewer pumping station that would go into the uh, borough's uh, sewer plant. So the authority, uh, uh, has uh, recommended this uh, be approved. It will mean jobs for the area, and uh, I think everybody seems to be working together uh, on this. Uh, the only other item, uh, if you look at the informational items uh, in your packet, was the Basin Street improvements uh, prepared 
by uh, Gilmore, uh, their estimated costs of phase one and uh, phase two. Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, we get a proposal from Gilmore to uh, do the design of phase one because I think funds may very well become available and I think we should be in a position that uh, we should be able to go out to bid in uh, 30 to 60 days. So first phase is uh, $213,000 and uh, I think funds will become available. Uh, we anticipate funds to be available shortly. So if you want to proceed with that first phase, I would uh, request that you uh, have the engineer uh, give you a proposal to do uh, the design costs for that first phase. And, and with that, we could also start to reach out to PennDOT since uh, Mill Street and Radcliffe Street are state roads, so we can start to bring them on board that maybe they can fund the second phase of that uh, improvement. So, And I think that if you look at that number, you know, with the telephone poles were $50,000. I think that's probably going to get done for nothing to get them moved or close to nothing. Uh, there's some, I don't have this with me. Brick sidewalk, 6,000, we don't need that. Decorative crosswalks and ADA, we don't need 12,000 for that. So we really got, we don't get the money. We could pare this down to meet our budget. Uh, concrete cutting, $16,000. I think that's a very high number. The problem is, again, People are so busy. These are the numbers that Gilmore's using because, you know, they they go out to certain people and say, "Give me a number what you would charge for this," and that's how basically you guys put these specs together. And you know, then when it goes out to public bid, we have an idea of what they're going to bid, just like the curb ramps. But they came in double. So I think this number, if it's not right now, but I think you're going to see, you know, hopefully it doesn't dry up. But construction right now is through the roof. I mean, you just you get 20 calls a day, you just can't keep up. I, I believe that numbers will come down. If not, maybe we got to do some stuff in-house to save some money. Okay. So that's that's everything I have for the agenda. There was just uh, one little email I'd like to read. Uh, from, if you don't mind, bore you with it a little bit, but uh, I think staff was pretty uh, uh, happy with it. I don't know if you remember the old pizza, pizza hut over in Commerce. Uh, <laughs> if you look at the new building today, it looks pretty nice. Uh, but uh, we had met uh, with uh, the owner and uh, his contractor a number of months ago, and I think everything worked out very well, but we did get a uh, email from the contractor, and uh, he basically said, I recently completed a construction project located at 65 Commerce Circle in your town. And I just wanted to take a moment and tell you what a pleasure it was to work with you folks. I built projects from Louis Louisville, Kentucky to Northern Maine and can't remember a better team that, I, uh, that I've had to deal with. Everyone was responsive, professional, and helpful. The building inspector from BIU was tough but fair and was a great help to us as well, something you don't see too often. We are a Florida-based company and probably won't be doing any more projects in Bristol Borough, but I just wanted to say thanks to a great uh, group of people. So we sent the, the final pictures of the photo, so it's very nice. nice. It looks nice and it's complete. And it's complete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else have anything? Ready? I just want to comment that a couple Thursdays ago, the uh, Bucks County Commissioners had their meeting on the road here at the, uh, at the Bristol Wharf, and uh, 
everyone there that I talked to from the Wilson, from the, the county government was really happy with the the, the project, the, the, the day docks, the wharf, the, the, you know, they were elated. There were a lot of people from out of town here. It was a packed house, and they were also honoring some students that got scholarships uh, from, from the surrounding area. So it was a nice day, and uh, I want to thank, thank the uh, borough crew for everything was all cleaned up and, and looking good. and. Uh, I want to thank the county commissioners for keeping us in mind. It's nice that they come down here to Bristol uh, to have their meetings once once a year. Had a beautiful day. It was a nice day. All right, so I don't need to agend this meeting, or I need just. No, you actually called it as a regular meeting, so just okay. proceed. That's what happens when you come in from the shore late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go. I'll start with. Uh, the mayor, Joe, what do you have? Uh, I have a couple things. I know we took my uh, commissioner's meeting thing, so I'll just say that they, uh, we also presented the commissioners with a memento to take back with them, uh, which was uh, some beautiful pictures of the new docks in the wharf area, and they were just, they were just amazed. As Councilman Cotrucci said, that the, uh, they brought about 45 of their staff with them, along with all the sound equipment, chairs, and everything. So it was a it was a great it was great to be involved with them. Ralph and I spoke, and Jim Dillon was there also. Um, the 21st Century uh, Organization, and the part of that is the Academic and Oversight Committee, will be doing the uh, family movie night that we've been doing for the last 10 years on Friday, July 20th. Uh, the movie will probably start at dusk. We encourage people to arrive at about seven o'clock. You can get your free drinks and free popcorn. Um, I know Chief Slack had asked about support for Motion 5 on the agenda, which is adopt the, to prohibit release of the helium balloons and sky lanterns. I would ask Council uh, to seriously consider and vote for that. Additionally, on the 26th of June, I met with the Fire Board, and again, for those of you not familiar with that, that's representatives from each of the companies in town and our chief and our deputy. Um, we reviewed quite a bit. I think everybody probably with all the press that happened uh, that was around on the incident in Ben Salem where the man went down into the uh, gas, down into the vault and exploded. Uh, we had a long discussion about that. I want to thank Chief Slack uh, for going on the internet and, and pulling out a lot of information relative to fuel tank vaults, uh, how to deal with getting in and getting out of them, some of the challenges. Uh, I know we also talked to John Miller, and uh, to the best of our knowledge, we don't have any of these in town, which was a good thing. Uh, also, too, uh, during one of our events, there was a, a nine-year-old uh, autistic boy who kind of got away from his family and was playing on the rocks, ended up in the water with the family, and some of our emergency medical people that were down there um, helped, helped the family uh, get him out of the water. One of the things we're looking at, and I meant to talk to the police chief about it, is getting some training for our volunteer firemen with dealing with uh, handicapped or mentally challenged or autistic children, which, you know, we could run into at any time. So we're looking at doing some training for that. Uh, I was asked a question on casino money if the fire departments could apply uh, for casino money. I told them that if we did something like that, the best way to handle that would be to do it collectively, come up with a project, and there's no guarantee that, you know, that we would get that money, but it would have to be done through the borough council, and everybody was fine with that. Uh, we also had a call at the high school. Um, I think there was a problem with our elevator. And, and that was taken care of. We had a little bit of discussion. It's one of the things that the, the, I think the fire chiefs do well is they review the calls and everything during the month and then pick out some of the things that have been challenges. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that we still have plenty of smoke detectors and uh, the CO alarms are in. Kirby and his group have been working on redoing how we do that, but I know they're I don't know, Herb, how many have we given out already, the CO alarms? I think we're, out of the group we have, it's over 100. 
also too at our fire board meeting, Herb uh, did a presentation or sent out a presentation. This is in the council members packet. Most injured body parts, 4th of July, 41% hands and fingers. Across the United States last year, 10,500 people treated in hospitals uh, for injuries. The second most important was 19,000 for hands and faces. And I'll, I'll end with, uh, I want to thank council and especially uh, Betty and Chief for mentioning about the uh, police department and the challenges that we all face out there every day, especially the police department, in dealing with the, the calls that we get every month. We average about 1,200 1, requests for calls a month. And um, also, too, they've been working on the various uh, major crimes that have been committed two years ago, a couple months ago, and, and getting some of those people off the streets is a major, major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank the chief and the department <coughs> and the county detectives who, who work along with us. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Okay, anybody have anything else? We'll go into uh, our motions. Number three on the agenda. President, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the council minute, uh, meeting minutes for 6418 and 61118, accept the treasurer's report for May of 2018, accept the police and DJ's report for June of 2018, accept the fire chief's report for June of 2018, accept the inspection department report for June of 2018, accept the public works department report for June 2018, Accept the hard report and decisions for 625-18. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution ratifying the 2018 Municipal Waste Management Plan as adopted by the Bucks County Board of Commissioners. Second. Second by Mr. Peza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number five. Mr. President, sorry. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to adopt an ordinance to prohibit the release of helium balloons and sky lanterns. I second. I second by Mr. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Number six. I'd like to make a motion to reject the handicapped curb bids. And we have a letter that came from Gilmore dated July 3rd, 2018. Second by Mr. Gerard, questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number seven. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution amending the Borough Official Sewage Facility Plan, Act 537 plan, allowing for sanitary sewer service to Bristol Township, TPN number 05-065-081. Second. Second. By Mr. Catrucci, questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number eight. Mr. President, I'd like to make a uh, a motion to give the Bucks County Tour of Honor a check for $250. Do I have a second? <coughs> Come on, Mr. Gerard. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Number nine. I'd like to make a motion to also give Dave Rago $2,500. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. President. Meeting adjourned.